uh, take the steps, even though they're ours, they're our steps, they're our choices. That third angel just strikes me as a, as a loving father that doesn't want to see us running out in the street. So we need to be mindful of that in that particular angel's message. And then, again, uh, message and its target. Another message, another messenger, and it's intended for the world. The Lord has given us that kind of truth to share for this time and in this setting to end the world. Now, the, the Laodicean message, I mentioned a little earlier, how James White, in this out of Revelation chapter 3, the seven churches, this is the last of the seven, it again speaks to uh, a condition, how we look at things, how we treat each other. Is it, uh, is it something that involves uh, pride? Are we so convinced we're right that we don't need anything? So that particular message comes post, and it says here, 1852, when that message was being shared. And you're seeing post the, uh, the great disappointment. You're seeing uh, people who have been through a lot of experiences, and they're coming to new uh, ideas and new epiphanies, and, and they're realizing this is the time that we need to start making choices. But this particular message needed to be pointed at God's people. So this message was intended for, and the truth in it, for those within the church. So the Laodicean message was then preparing, preparing a people to give the next message. And we'll just go to that one right now in Revelation chapter 18. The loud cry message, the loud cry message. That message begins, uh, begins in this era, this period, where all those truths have been uh, concluded, they've been realized. We've been through the Sabbath. We're now called Seventh-day Adventists. We have these pillars, but this particular loud cry message needed to take the things that we were given and they needed to express who Jesus is. And he needed, we needed to be able to share that truth, those truths, to, with the world so that they could get ready, so that the world can get ready for Jesus' soon return. This loud cry message in Revelation 18, verses uh, 1 through 5, we can turn to that text right now. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 18. This parallels uh, the second angel's message in its context of an understanding of what Babylon is. When we look at Revelation 18, verse 1, and it says, After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated, some versions lightened, with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. And he became, has become a dwelling place of demons and a prisoner for every foul spirit and every cage and for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunken of the wine of the wrath, the porn of, of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundant, the abundance of her luxury. Now, the part I find interesting is that when it says that the earth was illuminated or lightened with with his glory. What I love about that text is I believe that text is speaking to a people that have Jesus in them. And so now, how does the world get lit with God's glory? Except that he is in his people who are all the way around the 
planet that we're, that we're living in. So the illuminating, the seeing of his glory occurs with his people. So that message was given in that era with our people. And we got caught up in all kinds of uh, disappointing things. We got into arguments. We resisted the light. The idea of the message of righteousness by faith coming out in any 1888 era uh, was challenging. People didn't want to um, go along. They didn't want to accept. They had arguments. All these things. So, now what I wanted to do is then just, I understand the idea that the faith of Jesus then comes within each of these messages, the faith of Jesus, his faith. So what we'll do is take, uh, let's see here, the faith of Jesus in those six messages. And I'll see how we're doing with that, with that projector there. The loud cry, okay, I guess I'm not paying attention enough. These, uh, this is the, the sixth of the seven messages. So, the first angel's message, it speaks to the faith of Jesus within the everlasting gospel. So, when you see, when it says in Revelation 14, verses 6 through 7, who are we worshiping? The Creator. Who is that? That's Jesus. I, I find it kind of fascinating that uh, uh, the more we study uh, creation, we get all caught up in it in the actual created, but miss the creator in creation. And so, yet, that message is supposed to be giving us a context for who Jesus is. So the faith of Jesus in that first angel gives us a context for who the creator is. Then the, the second message, the faith of Jesus comes from being called out of Babylon kind of uh, rehearsing this point. But those other communities of faith were not wanting to carry and couldn't even give the message that needed to be given in that time, in that era. So the faith of Jesus allows us again to understand that the emphasis is on Him and the churches that they were connected to during that period were, were challenged by emphasizing Christ is returned and what he is doing, certainly then uh, later in the heavenly sanctuary. And let's see here, now the midnight cry. Back to the idea of oil, the idea of the Holy Spirit, the idea of spending time studying, allowing him to lead, opening our eyes up to what Jesus is up to, and then Believing that, trusting that, living lives that allow us to have His faith, not our own, but His, in our experiences. All right, the projector's back on. The third angel, or I'm sorry, and I did it. The, uh, the third, it's actually the midnight cry. Midnight cry, I got it, okay, and then the third angel gives us the dynamic of keeping God's commandments. One of the things that you get out of that text in Revelation 14, um, certainly uh, 6 through 12, but when we get down to uh, verses 9, 10, and then it uh, concludes that angel's message in, in uh, 11, but when we turn to verse 12, take a look at that. Here, in, in verse 12, Revelation 14, verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints, and here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, I might have uh, shared this last time, but when we're in that particular text, and the word keep is being used, keep in mind Keep in mind that another word that better represents the, the understanding of uh, keeping. Uh, Dad would tell me, hey, uh, Tim, 
take the word keep and try out the word cherish. Try that out. And now think of what those, what those commandments are saying. Are there things that we're checking off? Are there things that we're trying to uh, make sure the, the list has been completed? Or are we getting an idea that they have value and they're there for our benefit? And we need to be able to cherish, understand the, uh, the importance, the significance of those commandments. And then the idea of having faith, having Jesus' faith, comes together. And then the law starts to make sense. These are not just rules to keep, but they are safety nets for us to keep us from getting into, into trouble and having problems. So those six messages uh, include, of course, and I'm, I'm not going to go through all of this because I think you understand the, the uh, Laodicean, we covered that, we did the, uh, we did the, the loud cry. And now we have the importance of these messages. So now, the, the order I've been giving them to you in a specific order, and they don't make sense because you're wanting to put the third angel after the second and so on. But the reason we were given them is, is because we had an experience. They came in a certain order. And they, they were uh, sequential, certainly. And they were in our history. But it's this, this next point. These messages, they came in a specific order and a sequence, but there is something that uh, progressively occurs when you're going through them. They, they are cumulative. So you couldn't just jump over one and then continue. You needed to progress through as the Advent people went through those experiences. First angel, second angel, and then uh, midnight cry. When they were going through those experiences, you needed to grow in your understanding so you could be prepared for the next. And what I would like to do then is to make the point, because of the, uh, the application of those messages, that you grew, you understood, you went to the next one, and then they needed to share what they learned back then as our pioneers. But interestingly enough, we are also supposed to do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. We should be sharing those truths, those messages, in the setting, in the, uh, the time we're living, and be able to do this in a manner that allows us to prepare the world for Jesus' return. Mm -hmm. So this gives me the idea uh, that there are prerequisites. So many of us think, wow, we're just waiting for... Uh, the skies to open. We're waiting for Jesus to be seen face to face. But do we understand there's a prerequisite to the skies opening? So what happens before the skies open and the graves and the people and all that, the, the resurrection? What, what happens just before that? You're close. What was it? You have to have people that are ready. And uh, before the skies open, this is, this is good, but before the skies open and the graves and so on, all that happens, there is something called the time of trouble, right? So, in order for the skies to open, there has to be a time of trouble. Now, wait a minute. You can't have a time of trouble without the thing you just said a moment ago. A people that are ready, okay? So, the time of trouble doesn't occur until there's a people that are ready. Isn't that interesting? You just kind of back these things up a little bit and you get the idea there's a sequence. There's a purpose. So I'm curious now, and you know, we've lived through some crazy things the last year and a half, two years, right? Things we thought we'd never see. I mean, the, the planet getting shut down, people uh, not wanting to be near each other, you know, all kinds of 
uh, anxiety of two summers ago with uh, race in, in the country, people just you know, tearing the cities apart, just intense things going on. And some people look at that and go, well, these are, these must be, these must be signs of the time we're living in. Well, I have to ask a question this morning in a group like this as we're wrapping up our, our study. I would like to leave you uh, with this question. If we're seeing the winds of strife being released, if that's the case, wouldn't it make sense that if there's a progression to these messages and these experiences, that Holy Spirit must be convicting somebody? Wouldn't you think? Yes. So it, it just it makes sense. Is is that if you look at our history, we understand these truths that we've been given. They're explaining Jesus, and over and over and over, we're recognizing that it's Him that we're supposed to be trusting in. It's His faith that is uh, the basis for our experience, and that must be having an effect on somebody. I'm hoping it's. Uh, I'm getting included with you in that somebody, okay? So he invited us to come all the way from Wisconsin to hang out, but I'm sure believing that it's this group, it's those Holy Spirits working on that are going, Amen. amen. They're saying, amen. amen. And now the Lord's going, okay, we can start releasing those winds. Why? Because there's some main men's out here. Somebody is going, yeah, Jesus. That's who I'm looking for. That's who I'm hoping is being seen. And that then starts to make sense out of what this, uh, this group of people we're hanging out with here is about. We're not just trying to convict people of, and praise God, uh, Grandma Buffy, you're emphasizing a diet. But we need clean heads and minds to be able to understand Jesus is here and he wants us to get out of here and he wants us to reflect him in our lives. That, that message of uh, Revelation 18, verse 1, seeing his glory, that's God's glory in his people. That's us. That's those that we're uh, connecting with, those we're touching with, the neighbor next door with the dog, right? Going to work, paying the bills. Jesus needs to be seen in those places. So, my sense is, Holy Spirit's convicting people. We're sharing these truths. We're going through righteousness by faith, understanding it's His righteousness, not ours. That needs to be seen. So I'm going to stop right here, and we're, we have a closing hymn that has been uh, selected.
a God of love. Lord, the, the source of our faith. Lord, the action of us believing. Lord, why is it that Jesus is the author? Well, Lord, there could be nothing other than him to be the basis of what we believe. So, Lord, this morning, let him be seen in your people. Lord, let us not cling to this world. Let us let go of all the foolishness going on around us. Lord, soften our hearts. Heal our homes. Amen. And Lord, let this, this crazy thing going on in this world be ended. And let us see Jesus face to to face. Amen. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.